voice of God calls us to awaken him. How will he find us when he comes? Awake and ready. And when he asks us to dedicate ourselves ever more perfectly to him, how will he find us? Awake and ready. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Father Divine Mother. Divine Mother. Friend, beloved God. Friend, beloved God. Great Masters. Great Masters. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Babaji Krishna. Babaji Krishna. Lahiri Mahashaya. Lahiri Mahashaya. Swami Sri Yukteswar. Swami Sri Yukteswar. Paramahansa Yogananda. Paramahansa Yogananda. Saints of all religions. Saints of all religions. We humbly bow to you all. We humbly bow to you all. Divine Mother, Divine Mother, give us thyself, give us thyself, that we may give thee to all, that we may give thee to all. Bless us, bless us, free us, free us, in this lifetime, in this lifetime. Oh, oh. I've drunk the cup of laughter No man could tell The pleasures I had won The stars in the endless night If one could
without paying for what he gets, and one who accepts a kindness without returning gratitude, as though the kindness were his by right, demeans both the giver and himself. He demeans the giver because by ingratitude he implies that the kindness was inspired by selfish motives, and he demeans himself because by giving nothing in return he breaks the cycle of creativity without which prosperities flow both materially and spiritually is blocked. Accept nothing inwardly for yourself, but offer everything to God. Don't let yourself be bought by others' kindnesses. Be grateful to them above all in your soul by blessing or praying for them. Give gratitude first of all to God, from whom, all, from whom alone all blessings truly come. Let's affirm together, first in a strong voice as Yoganandaji taught, and then we'll do it progressively softer until silently. I give thanks to the giver behind each gift. I give, I give thanks, thanks to the giver behind each gift. And to the one giver behind all that I receive. And to the one giver behind all that I receive. My gratitude rises with devotion's incense. My gratitude rises with devotion's incense. To the throne of omnipresence. To the throne of omnipresence. A little softer. I give thanks to the giver behind each gift. I give thanks to the giver behind each gift. And to the one giver behind all that I receive. And to the one giver behind all that I receive. My gratitude rises with devotion's incense. My gratitude rises with devotion's incense. To the throne of omnipresence. To the throne of omnipresence. Now in a whisper, but keep your concentration deepening. I give thanks to the giver behind each gift. I give thanks to the giver behind each gift. And to the one giver behind all that I receive. My gratitude rises with devotion's incense to the throne of omnipresence. Now mentally, I give thanks to the giver behind each gift. And to the one giver behind all that I receive, my gratitude rises with devotion's incense to the throne of omnipresence. I give thanks to the giver behind each gift and to the one giver behind all that I receive. My gratitude rises with devotion's incense to the throne of omnipresence. And pray silently with me. I thank thee, Lord, for all thy blessings, but most of all, I thank thee for thy love. morning again, friends. I'm Narayan. This is my wife, Dharma Devi, if you don't know us. And welcome to our friends joining online. Every week we share from um, this book, Rays of the One Light. And these are parallel passages between the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita. And this week's topic is the law of karma, bondage or soul release. Truth is one and eternal. 
Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. The epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians contains this oft-quoted statement. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In Autobiography of a Yogi, Paramhansa tells a story from the life of the Banar Saint Trilanga Swami. A skeptic once determined to expose Trilanga as a charlatan. A large bucket of calcium lime mixture used in whitewashing walls was placed before the Swami. Master, the materialist said in mock reverence, I have brought you some clabbered milk. Please drink it. Trilanga unhesitatingly drained to the last drop the container full of burning lime. In a few minutes, the evildoer fell to the ground in agony. Help, Swami, help, he cried. I am on fire. Forgive my wicked test. The great yogi broke his habitual silence. Scoffer, he said. You did not realize when you offered me poison that my life is one with your own. Except for my knowledge that God is present in my stomach, as in every atom of creation, the lime would have killed me. Now that you know the divine meaning of boomerang, never again play tricks on anyone. The well-purged sinner, healed by Trilanga's words, slunk feebly away. Yogananda goes on to say, the reversal of pain was not due to any volition of the master, but came about through unerring application of the law of justice, which upholds creation's farthest swinging orb. Men of God realization like Trilanga allowed the divine law to operate instantaneously. They have banished forever all thwarting cross crosscurrents of ego. Not by reason alone, but by self-realization are the ins and outs of destiny fully understood. Their web, though tied forever to the post of ego motivation, is too intricate to be perceived as a single thread. Only great masters can see it with clarity. It is visible to them in all its workings, not from within the tangle, but from above, in superconsciousness. As Sri Krishna said in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, he who beholds inaction in action and action in inaction is wise among men. He is one with the spirit. He has attained the true goal of action, perfect freedom. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. There's a lot of joy from these ceremonies. There's also a lot of 
energy that goes into them. And then uh, knowing that the following day would be followed up with giving the Sunday service talk. <laughs> so I woke up Sunday evening and all the weekend is over and I get to relax. And then I went, wait, it's Sunday morning. <laughs> but this brings me to what I'd like to talk to you about today, which is acceptance. And a lot of the law of karma is about acceptance. Uh, Narayan and I were just on a trip to the East Coast to visit family. And uh, on our way back, the plane had a lot of difficulties. So first we get the announcement, which if you've ever heard, it's not a good sign mm -hmm. you hear. Uh, is there a doctor on the plane? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very quietly, so like, just the doctor can hear? <laughs> and goes, I think they just asked for a doctor. <laughs> God. But, um, and Narayan caught it, and I said, what did she just ask? I said, he asked for a doctor. She, she asked for a doctor. I was like, ooh, okay. So, we're just all kind of waiting, going about our business. Oh, that's probably not a big deal. Then we get another announcement. <laughs> about uh, probably an hour into the flight now. Um, hello from the flight deck. This is your captain speaking. Our flight attendant is having a serious health issue and we're going to have to divert the flight and land in Dallas, Texas. <clears throat> so we're all like, oh my God. What, you know? and so we're sending prayers and uh, to the flight attendant and he said, not only would we divert the flight because of a person's health, also we're not allowed to fly with only two flight attendants, so we have to stop and get another one. <laughs> and so, so we're all going, oh gosh, interesting. Our little nonstop five hour flight, he just got done telling us how he was so proud that he had shaved an hour off of the flight time. So we were gonna get there in five hours instead of six, so that it was like, okay. And he's like really optimistic, he says, but you know, we were an hour ahead of schedule, so now I think we're gonna get in just like a half an hour later than originally planned. So it's like, okay, that doesn't sound too bad. So. Anyways, we get back into the air again, on our way now to LA, and we hit a serious patch of turbulence. I think it was because he was trying to really get us home fast. <laughs> so, so we get into the really bumpy, and I'm talking at least 20 minutes. And so, but turbulence is really what I want to talk about. Because we have turbulence, on our plane flight, we have turbulence in our lives. And this turbulence, I used as an opportunity because I tend to get motion sickness on boats, in cars, on planes, you name it, motion sickness <laughs> can really get me bad. So when the turbulence started, and it was clear it was not just going away by, well, we'll just go up to the next level. No, it was there to stay for a while. I closed my eyes and I started to think of all those things I might be attached to. <laughs> and how, well, if we go down, what am I going to do? I can't, can't get out of it. You're going down, you're going down. So I thought of all those things. I thought of my little dog. Well, she'll be taken care of. She has a whole family there to take care of her. Thought of my family and my spiritual family. You know, the show will go on. <laughs> and so I came to a really nice place. By the time I got done with this whole train of thought, the turbulence had ended. <clears throat> Didn't have any motion sickness whatsoever, which I'm surprised Narayan wasn't, maybe he was sitting there praying for me because usually just coming in for the landing, I'm like, oh, okay, when are we going to land? But I was totally fine. And so I thought, this is really interesting, this phenomena of motion sickness. So I looked it up, I researched motion sickness. And what causes motion sickness is the conflict between our senses. So the inner ear feels, and I, I may butcher this a little, I warn you, 
the inner ear feels that your body is moving but if you're looking at something like especially if you're reading or looking at a static image in front of you your eyes are telling you you're not moving and so there's a conflict one part of your being is saying this is happening the other part is saying no it's not and do you get where I'm going with this in our lives we have turbulence constantly it seems like turbulence and when we get into suffering is when we're in conflict with what's happening outside of us and we say no that's not that's not happening or that shouldn't be happening we don't accept what's happening in our lives Swami Kriyananda said that the root of all suffering is not accepting things as they are so if we can get out of that um, tendency towards pushing away towards uh, refusing to accept refusing to embrace our karma because turbulence remember is just our karma coming back we've all heard about karma and sometimes I think we get into the tendency to think how sneaky karma can be <clears throat> like oh god just around the corner is another <laughs> big karmic bomb waiting to drop on me but karma's not sneaky karma is just infallible law it's just there because of something we've done maybe we don't remember what we've done which is usually when we get into trouble and go why me I don't deserve that or she doesn't deserve that he doesn't deserve well at some point in time we have done something that has caused this reaction from the universe to teach us a lesson if we can accept it we can use it as a tool which is the only purpose of karma is a loving tool to help us achieve self-realization there's nothing malicious about karma it's not out to get us <laughs> it's a beautiful divine law to help us transcend our egos so um, <clears throat> I, let me remember what it is I want to say oh the remedy I thought this was really beautiful the remedy for motion sickness do you know what it is it's looking at the horizon if you're in a car you look out in the distance at your environment if you're in the sky you think you have a window seat you look out the window or you close your eyes both of these though I thought just reading that line look at the horizon it was like wow because Yogananda said when you meditate if you're on the beach look at the horizon line and that's this we're, we're trying to pierce that thin veil between the, uh, the the conscious mind and the subconscious mind and go into super consciousness that's a tiny point it's that invisible point of the horizon that's just going beyond going beyond and getting into that super conscious state so the the remedy for our lack of acceptance in life is meditation is going into the superconscious mind there's really nothing else we can do i mean we can't we can work through our karma absolutely we have to we can do our best and maybe get a little ways on the journey but ultimately the tests are never going to stop coming I mean I just have to say that <laughs> we think we get into our mind we get hypnotized well this has got to end at some point <laughs> and you know it just doesn't one will end another will come so the sooner we can get to that place of loving acceptance of there will be turbulence and how can I get out of my motion sickness how can I get into acceptance? How can I get into super consciousness? And pray. Pray for the grace of the masters, of Divine Mother, of God in whatever form 
you feel, uh, especially in this holy season, sacred time of year, call on the Christ consciousness. And that's really, this is the horizon that we're aiming for, is that spiritual eye, the, the center of the spiritual eye is, it's like a bullseye. So we just go for the bullseye. Think of that as your horizon line, keeping your consciousness, not just your gaze, because we can't walk around throughout the day looking up and we'll <laughs> run into things, but we can always have our consciousness at this point. And think of this as your own personal horizon whenever you're feeling the motion sickness of life. Yeah.